No, you stop right there. All right. What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing on this fantastic Tuesday? We're going to run it through pretty quick this morning. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, it's pulling back. It's in a range, just trading in a longer term range here. We got the halving coming up on Friday, uh, but we're not really expecting much out of that right off the bat. Uh, we've looked on the last few halvings and it, it takes the market a lot of time before the halving starts an actual massive bull market. But we never had a bull market before the halving. So it's kind of weird uh, that this year or last year, 2023, was a bull market all the way pretty much for the whole entire year. And then 2024 opened up right here, as you can see, and then held as support and then off to the races it went. So it's almost as if though the market's already pricing in the halving. Now, a lot of people will assume that the fact that we've got all those ETFs is, is probably the, the reason that the markets have been bullish. But if you look at risk markets of what as well, they have been extremely bullish pretty much the same time. Now, we were looking for this market to roll over back in this area here because that's literally when Bitcoin had its first pullback. So you can see Bitcoin had a pretty significant pullback here in the tune of almost 15%, set in a lower high, even though it is higher than this set of highs, it is still lower than this high. So this is a lower high. And basically we got this low right here. So from 73,835 down to 59,224 is a massive range that Bitcoin is currently trading in. If we take out this wick low, we will have a higher or a lower high, lower low sequence. That does not necessarily mean that a downtrend is inevitable. This white line right here, 66650, is representative of where I took a short entry yesterday morning. I was watching this four hour candle trade up, and I just seen this swing low right here. And I was like, well, heck, if it's going to roll over, why couldn't it roll over right there? So I actually took the entry when we got below because when this was happening, this was also making a fresh daily high yesterday. So this was the high of day. And then when we traded up, made a fresh high of day, I waited for price to get back under the high of day. And I hit the short button and I put my stop above the wick and price just faded away, which was beautiful. So I am sitting in a short right now. That position is currently up 177% as I have not taken profits. <clears throat> um, I am trading Bitcoin, the the uh coin m futures contract so basically that just means for anybody that's new that watches this video is i'm taking trades in bitcoin so if i win my trade i get paid in bitcoin if i lose my trade i lose bitcoin i like to do this instead of just buying bitcoin because if you can trade profitably over time you can accumulate a mass amount of bitcoin without actually having to buy any if you want to do that, there is a link in the description for the week's platform. Uh, they did have a few technical difficulties the other day. So please, if you do use that link, only put out on an on exchange an amount of money that you are not afraid to lose. All right. Make sure you guys always do that because I have a little over $5,000 on the exchange. Obviously, I got nervous when I couldn't sign in, but it was a technical difficulty and I was able to get in in like an hour or so. So all is good there. All right. So that's currently what we have on Bitcoin. The small account, the one that has that was down to the tune of almost 6% on the year is finally profitable <laughs> by $13 today. So no longer are we losing money on the small account. Thanks to these two short calls here, both of these are short calls, and thanks to this put, the 42 strike put on the XLF, that literally turned the account around. Also, the gold trade that I had on was also a good trade. So those last three trades literally pulled this account from being unprofitable to actually being up. Now, with fees and all that, it's probably still in the red a little bit. But, you know, we go by the P&L year today to kind of gauge where the account is. Am I going to close those positions? Probably today. Yeah, 
Um, because I'm assuming that since today is Tuesday, there's a pretty high probable chance that we could potentially take out the low of day and then roll over, or in other words, start to head back to the upside, and I don't want to lose those profits. I can always jump back in a trade. I don't need to let the profits dissipate because I think the market is going to continue to go straight down because that is not typically what happens in a bull market, all right? You will get a correction, but if you look at the all-time high to where the market is currently trading, you're going, well, that did not work. <laughs> Let me try it again. You go down to where it is currently trading, you can see that you're only down a slight 4%. Where's my pen? Give me my pen. Thank you. 4% right there we're down a negative four percent so that's not really big actually that's right in line where we would expect the bulls to start picking it back up there you go uh the reason we were kind of looking for a pullback is because we got so extended from the weekly 21 exponential moving average so we are coming in line there we do have an area of potential resistance or potential support right here so there's, let's move this down right here because we're no longer trading it up at these areas. Uh, so that's good. Good. I'm glad I got the pullback. Now, here's the thing. Is the markets going to remain bullish? Uh, probably not. But I would say more than likely they're probably going to be range bound for a while until the CPI number levels out until energy or oil starts to dissipate a little bit because every $10 barrel oil every ten dollars it moves up that's a 0 0.2 percent increase on your uh normal cpi number so that's pretty much why we had an ink that's why we missed cpi uh and the fed is going to be speaking jerome powell himself will be speaking today at 1 30 i don't know if it'll be televised or youtube advised or not you will just have to find it yourself uh my internet's been really bad lately so the likelihood of me being able to stream that will be very, very slim. Uh, so I just wanted to, it's been so long since I've actually been able to do a live stream. I wanted to do it while I could uh, before it gets slowed down. Uh, we missed big shorts here on Euro USD. Uh, I, we took two, or I took two shots at it right in this period here on this day specifically. I took a short. And when it hit there, I uh, took profits and moved my stop to break even. And obviously, the next day, I got stopped out right there. Uh, and I also took a short on this day here. And the next day was stopped out. All right. So I lost 1% here. I made like 4% on this trade and then ended up getting stopped out. So obviously, it evened it out. But I was looking for this move. So you can see how I was just one, two, three days early. Uh, we should have probably taken the trade upon a breakdown of four hour support up here, like right in this area. We probably should have just had a, 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 an order setting there to get filled upon a fresh low, but we did it because that's typically not the way we trade. So unfortunately we were unable to capitalize on this move. If you are trying to short USDJPY, please be aware that the BOJ has not said anything yet and they have not acted on anything yet. And you will know when they do, right? Because you will see big, massive moves. Let's see if we can get this. You will see massive moves like this. This was a 500 and something pip day. All right. Nothing compared to what you got today. In fact, today you're still green on the day. So I know people are trying to short this, but right now, even though they did raise their interest rates, there is still such a wide differential between our interest rate being the USD and their interest rate. The carry trade is still extremely bullish. You couple that with a bullish dollar and you get this. So please be careful if you are trying to pick a top on this this thing could run to 160 before they decide to jump in if they decide to jump in at all right 
And if they did decide to jump in, like literally the only thing that can make this a good short trade is if the U.S. dollar starts cutting or the U.S. Fed starts to cut rates quickly and aggressively. Then this could potentially be a good short uh, but that would be that would all be determined on how the market reacts to that, right? Because you have the news and then you have the market's reaction to the news. <clears throat> Excuse me. With the having coming up, it's going to be more difficult for Mara and Riot and what's the other one? Uh, the uh, CLSK Clean Spark. It's going to be more difficult for those companies to make money. So if you are still losing money by trying to buy every dip on Mara and Riot, please stop doing it, right? Because the market participants are smart enough to know that when the halving happens, it makes it more difficult for miners to make money. Hence the reason this has been selling off. And I've been telling people that for the last several weeks. So it's better if you just play Bitcoin. Obviously, I know why people like to play with Mara and Riot because they're speculation assets mostly and they move a lot. I mean, they move very, very much from that high down to where you are is bigger than a 50% move. That's a lot of money potentially to be made, but you can make a lot of money just trading Bitcoin the way I trade it. Like I said, my current position is up 178% right now. So that's almost twice doubled the amount of money that I had on there or opened the position with. So you, you don't literally have to trade these very volatile assets. All right. So, all right. Um, let's go ahead and go look at XLF, which is the other reason why the small account got up nicely. Now I said in the, in the private discord, or the private live stream on Sunday to channel members that we were going to be watching TLT to see if it was able to hold support. Support being this bottom trend line here because you did have a push lower and then a gap up. So we were watching this. Upon yesterday's open, you knew yesterday at the open that you had gap down below support. That means pre and post market, you lost support. You should not have entered this trade. The trade was if it held support and started to climb up, then we would potentially look to buy calls, not if it's breaking down. Breaking down is not good to buy, right? Because you're trying to buy something that is showing you already that there's more bearish pressure than bullish. Also, massive signal is this thing is still structured bearishly with the moving averages. So, I mean, literally, it was just a potentially a buy if it held support here with the markets coming off a little bit, S&P 500, then maybe we could see bonds start to rally. It did not happen. In fact, with this, uh, with the bonds selling off hard, and XLF selling off hard, it probably had a little bit to do the reason why this is selling off hard. So let's go ahead and close these positions out while we can. All right, this strategy is invalid. Try legging out because already it's already back in the red, right? All right, so let me, I'm gonna have to close each one of these positions out manually. Let's see if we can get that one filled. Um, and then let me go here. I'll show you what I'm doing. I had these for this one 45 days out, way, way out of the money. Um, but you know, both of these have paid nicely. So this, the spread is getting all jacked up in there right now. So I'll just leave that where it's sitting. And then I'll come out here to this one here. 65 days left on this. There's still $14.50. Uh, and you multiply that times five. If the markets continue to sell off or in if 65 days goes by and we're not trading above 44 or 54.50, then this will, there's still quite a bit of premium on this. 
So why even close it? Why not leave it open? 14.5 oh, times 5 would be, there's still $72 worth of profit on this. But do I want to sit there and hold it when I've already pretty much made, you know, a decent amount of money? So if you look at both of these positions, you can see right here and here, both of them, the both of the percentage profit bars are well above 50%. Typically, when I sell calls or puts, I'm just looking to gain 50% profitability on those positions, close them, and then look to potentially reverse the trade. So, like, close this trade and then close this trade. Let's close it at the mid. Oh, this is the one I'm already got, ain't it? Yeah, not this one. It's the next one. Here. So we close this out. 1450. That should fill quick. But the other one might not. There you go. You see there it is. It moved up to 1450. So that should get filled. There it is. And then this one. This one is the one that's going to struggle because it's so um, it's it's a lot lower. So let's cancel this out and you'll see that drop down there. All right. So we want to retry it again. Get in there at three ninety five and it should sell. Which just means it's a little bit less than I'm going to than I than I'm going to make. And then this position here is well over 100 percent. It's over 100 percent. So literally, I mean, what more could you ask for, right? What more could you ask for on that? You, you, when you get over 100%, you just take your profits. And like I said, it boom, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make the small account up. So here we currently are on the XLF. Let me go over here and show you real fast. So the XLF is still having a down day. So I might, I might set a trailer to like where today's open is at like 39.90 to close the position out because banks are having earnings right now all right so let's go look at the bank's earnings jp morgan they had earnings here huge gap down and they beat on earnings but it was still a huge gap down and then Wells Fargo had earnings there. It's moving lower. BAC had earnings today. They, they're they all beat. All of these banks beat. Look at this move on BAC today. Yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. And then a lot of these things are getting... Why is Wal... Oh, it's not Walmart. Sorry. I was getting ready to say, why is Walmart in here? And then the other big bank, where are you? Where are you? Morgan Stanley, it hasn't had earnings yet. It will have earnings today. Or did it have earnings pre-market? Let's see. Yeah, it did have earnings today. All right, so basically those are the biggest banks inside of the XLF. So, I mean, the XLF could continue to see more downside today which is nice, but you can see that we are into a daily support right here. So, I mean, do I want to try to squeeze it for every last cent I can get out of it? Because tomorrow it could gap up to $41. And since I sold the 42 strike call or put, not sell, sorry, since I bought the 42 strike put, that would lose uh, quite a bit of money if it was to gap up, right? So you typically want to be able to get these things on the move lower. Now, nobody knows how low it's going to go. Uh, this thing has been absolutely just ripping since October. So it could absolutely sell off a little bit more. But I am looking for a, a run back up. And then maybe we could potentially look to short it again. Right? That's the way you trade. You take the money when you have it. That way you can build your account up. Close this position out. I mean, $158 worth of profit on this is nice. 
I mean, when I when I put when I took this entry, I bought it here. So I'm literally one, two, three, four, five strikes in the money. I'm not going to expect it to go up much further. It could. Obviously, I have no idea what can happen. But I know one thing. I'm not going to let this go. I will simply re-enter a trade upon a retest of resistance. This way, we can uh, start making some money on the account instead of being in the red for so long. But hey... I got to I got to take care of my main accounts first. You guys know that, right? Those main accounts are the ones that keep me being able to pay my bills. So I got to be able to pay my bills. Let me see what's going on here. All right, YouTube's complaining, but everything looks good. Yo, what's up everybody? How's everybody doing? Good morning, Lacey, Brian, and Dreamer. What's up? All right, so that's that. Um Let's go here and look at some other things. We were looking for a long on Pan W, uh, but we missed it down here at support. So we'll watch it again if it gets back down here. I don't love it with the if the tech market starts to sell off. I won't like it at all. All right, as long as the tech market, well, Microsoft came off heavy yesterday. Apple had a nice last end of week rally last week. Two days, boom, boom, straight up. It's coming back into place. NVIDIA just will not, for whatever reason, sell off. This thing is in a range, and this is that range right there. Pretty much, that's your support level. I mean, you could draw one here if you want, or find a weekly support. There is none, so there you go. Those are your support levels on NVIDIA. We need this thing to break down and start to really move lower. And then we could look to potentially get into another short trade on the S&Ps. Um, but like I said, these, these things need to break down before you see like a cascading effect happen on the S&P 500. Uh, Google, you were you just made fresh all-time highs on Friday. So you're two days into that. It sounded like we just got filled. What happened? Didn't you hear? I heard a fill. Hmm. I don't know what's going on. All right. So I don't understand that. It sounded like it just filled. But we'll leave it working. Tesla is is breaking down they had to lay off i think thirteen thousand employees so obviously it's they're not doing good for the for the now but i mean people are asking when it when is it a good time to buy tesla i mean tesla's down on the year pretty severely right almost 40 percent i'd say if tesla gets down 50 percent i'd say it'd probably be a safe bet to buy a few shares but, I mean, if you look at this, you've almost given back the entire 2023 rally. Not good. This is not good at all. Not good at all. Because Tesla was considered or is in the Magnificent 7. It's the only one outside of Apple. Well, Apple's down on the year too, but Apple hasn't given back almost all of its 2023 gains. See, down here is, is where 2023 started on Apple, right in here. So Apple still has a low, a boatload to go before it gets even close to where Tesla is. Tesla's just a few percent off. So um, it's 31% it's up since 2023, but almost 40% down in the year 2024. So, yeah, it doesn't look great. Uh, but it, there is a trend line here that it does seem to be catching a little bounce from today. So, I mean, if you're going to buy calls on it for like a day trade, I wouldn't expect it to get much above 161. That'd still be a nice little day trade if it does go up, right? If it does go up, you've got earnings coming up next week. So be very careful. 
next Tuesday. So you're going to have to buy, you're going to have to buy calls for this week in order to, to get away from that high, high IV. Next week's implied volatility will be much higher than this week's implied volatility. And we can just go check that. Let's get this thing filled before it starts to bounce quickly. Or let's go see what's going on with it. Why hasn't it filled? Yeah, it's bouncing at support. So, all right. So I'll just move. I'll just move the bid up a little bit here. I'll cancel this out, and we'll move it up just a little bit. So there it is. You can see retail gets first come first serve when it comes to the options exchange. That's how come you can see my one little tiny order affect the ask price because I'm asking 235 to get out. Somebody else is asking 234. So they obviously have a better ask than me. They will likely get filled quicker than me. And that's how that works, right? That's how that works. Or the market could have just fluctuated down to 234 because the bid is now at 219. One or the other. But we'll see how it works. I don't want to move it too much because that's going to make the difference up here. Lovely stuff. It's just bouncing right now. So today's Tuesday. We have to be aware that Tuesdays can and sometimes do call the low of the week. That would be great if we could get another push down to about here. That would that would that should fill me. To be honest, I don't know why it hasn't filled yet. I don't want to keep running it up because it's just going to make it make less money. Yeah, so nobody was nobody was bidding to nobody was asking 235. The market just moved up that fast. We really need to get filled on a down tick. So now we're asking 231. And that sucks. I was trying to get it filled while it was on the lows. Right. As long as it pushes up, it's not going to fill me. It's got to fill me on a down tick. And it's been, it's moved down quite a bit. So if you look at the weekly, you can really see what's going on here. Nice gap up and then down she goes. This could be the low of the week. That'd be three weekly red candles in a row in an uptrend. So we'll see here if this is going to be the weekly low on all of this stuff, right? S&P 500, if you look last Friday right here, we, close, we tagged the bottom edge of the expected move. There was an 80, $84 or $86 expected move. So that, that means you could go up. $83, or you can go uh, down $83, right? That's what that means. $83 up or $83 down. This week, it was $101. 101. So we haven't tagged this expected move yet, but we're close to it. And in this entire bull market, we really have only breached the downside of the expected move a couple times, right? Not many times. So here was one day where we had a huge breach. This was Fed speak day or CPI day. I can't remember. It was one of the two. That's when we had the big massive move down. But look, the very next day you traded right back up into it and then closed Friday above it. We closed Friday above it. So this is a new week. This is a new expected move. Most of the time, the markets, you know, trades down to it and then goes up. Trades down to it and then goes up. 
So it might not be a bad idea to put on maybe a short put for the near term, maybe just a week. Just for a bounce, like to trade a bounce back up to the weekly open. Which the weekly open in this case would be all the way up there to 5150. So, yeah, I don't know. I think probably we'll see how today closes out. If we close lower again today than than selling up put, wait till the end of the day today. Don't don't jump into it right here right now. Wait till the end of the day. If you close lower than yesterday's close, then I probably wouldn't put on a short put. Because remember in in order to make money on a short put, you need the market to go up or stay away from 4850s or wherever you put it on man this thing ain't bounce this thing is not gonna fill me but let's go look and see what that would look like on the micro contracts forward slash mes we could go out you know six days or something and just come out here and sell sell a 40 or five thousand dollar put there's not a whole lot of premium in that be about 80 bucks, $76. Well, if that's it, we don't want to do that. We want to sell. It'd be about $86. And that's if the market stays above 5020. It's currently trading at 5109. So do we think the market could come down that fast or that far after it's already had a 4% move to the downside? Probably not. But it could, right? We never know. I'll keep that in there. And that's a very near-term trade, right? So just a small bounce would put you up about 40 or 50 bucks and you could close a trade out if it bounces. If, 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 that we always have to operate on if-then scenarios. If this happens, then we do that, right? Because we don't know what the market's going to do ever. Ever, ever. It would be nice if I knew exactly what the market was going to do. I would own my own island. <clears throat> but I don't. So it looks like if in order for me to fill this, I'm literally just going to have to go in there and fill it pretty much right on the freaking bid. And I don't want to do that. But I want to get out of this trade because I don't want this thing to bounce. So I'm going to go just. I'm going to fill at 226 just to get out of it. There, boom, done, filled out. Now I have no open positions. And the PL year to date is setting at negative 76 cents. <laughs> I'll take that. It's better than being down 400. <laughs> like I said, I just needed some two sided trade. It's too difficult, you know, to just stay bullish when the market is so overbought across the board like you were so overbought on tech you're so overbought on energy so overbought literally on almost every freaking sector out there it makes it difficult here's your energy just literally going up but this does look like a bull flag working out here um if they can calm the middle east down then oil should in theory come down a little bit but We'll watch it, how it closes today. A close above support could potentially be a buy. But let's go look at some sectors. And then if anybody's, oh, here's some things I want to show you uh, that we also discussed. Here's the XLK versus the XLP. XLP is uh, consumer staples. Basically, we want to see this start to roll over if we're anticipating a deeper correction all right if we're anticipating a deeper correction we would want to see this start to basically make 
lower highs and lower lows, then we can interpret that deeper correction on the SPY. But since we don't have that yet, since it's basing out here in like a bullish formation, we have to take that with us when we make our trade decisions. So we don't want to just sit here and be like, oh, we broke down. The uptrend's broken, so it's time to get bearish. Not necessarily. Not necessarily at all. All right? The last time we had a few days of downside, you can see it got bought back up. But that was also around the yearly opening range. I would assume we'll probably trade range bound until the next CPI print or until the next Fed day. Which is good because if we trade choppy and sideways, that literally means since the skew is still up so nicely, it's still well above that 130 mark here. As long as you're above that 130 mark, then that means there is premium to sell. High premiums. And when you have high premiums, that's very good because you can sell calls and puts and the market could trade sideways and you don't have to trade 90 days out to make good money. You can simply take, you know, smaller trades. <clears throat> A couple days out, if you wish. Just to basically, you know, you're basically wanting to sell down here and sell up here, right? Sell outside of the market range. It's coming into monthly demand. I understand that. <clears throat> it tagged it to perfection this morning. But how, how big of a bounce are you going to get? I mean, if you want to buy a TLT call right now and you think it's going to bounce, you know, back up to 89 bucks you can make 40 or 50 dollars but i mean it's yeah it is bouncing off a of monthly demand that is correct i've already got it there i already know we were already discussing that this morning me and another person before we went live so i mean it yeah it is bouncing off of that but i mean this is definitely a free fall this was downside move, free fall, consolidation, and free fall. So if anything, the, the correct trade would to be wait for a retest of resistance and look to get short. But it is getting pretty extended to the downside on the daily time frame. You can see your 21 exponential is way up here. Yeah, you're a couple standard deviations away. Right? Or we could also put on a, the bowling band or Bollinger bands. Yeah, so you, you you're 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 below the second standard deviation move, and your twenty one or twenty standard moving average is is setting at around ninety, ninety one or ninety two, oh eight. I mean, you, you could trade it for a bounce, but those, those are typically the wrong kind of ways to do it. I mean, uh, because literally you're, you're as long as, as long as your yields are climbing, I mean, look at the 30 year, it's climbing today, 20 year climbing. The TLT is the 20 year. It is climbing. It's at resistance. I mean, it is possible. But it's definitely climbing, and this is definitely putting pressure on the markets. <clears throat> Would I ever swap my old truck for a cyber truck? <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, the reason I keep my truck is because I can fix it. You know what I'm saying? Like, pay 119 or 120 thousand dollars for a car and then you know you're looking at what a, a cool 2k every time a thing goes into the shop for whatever hopefully you don't have a major battery malfunction because then you're looking at 20 grand whereas my truck i can fix it worst case scenario for a couple thousand dollars that's if the engine completely malfunctions. 
which, you know, won't ever happen because I take care of it. But still, you, you get what I'm saying, right? It's much easier and cheaper for me to just keep my truck. It drives good. It handles good. There's no check engine lights on in it or anything like that. AC still blows cold. It's a good vehicle. Sky airbags, everything like that. It's a good vehicle. Plus, I don't have to worry about someone trying to steal it because, hey, it's a cyber truck. <laughs> right? But yeah, as long as yields are climbing, especially the 20 year yield, you don't necessarily want to be getting long TLT because this is an inverted chart of the TLT. Right? It's just that chart don't have gaps. But if you drew this as a line chart, it would just simply be an inverted chart of that. So I, I kind of wanted it to hold support here and start to climb while the S&P 500 was going lower. I didn't want to see them falling together. Because they've pretty much been doing the opposite of each other. Now that they're correlated, they're probably only going to stay correlated for it. A little short period of time we'll see how how this thing closes out the day All right but either way now that we have broken out of this upward channel here that is going to bring about some two-sided trade or potential buying opportunities uh, but it is still extremely stretched out on the weekly time frame I mean, you were massively overbought there. Uh, the only reason we were even thinking about looking for shorts on Bitcoin was because Bitcoin was showing us that weekly bearish div from this weekly candle here we discussed on Sunday, right? We discussed it last Sunday and this Sunday. That's literally it. We had that, that bearish divergence on the weekly and when we had bullish divergence on the weekly, that provided a hell of a good signal to get long. But yeah, I would love to see this move, this thing get, you know, it's it's looking good now, right? Looking much better for another move back up. But I would love to see it get down to at least 60 on the momentum oscillator. If it can get down there 60 or 50 and hold, then, uh, then you could potentially look to buy supports. Because we know it takes time. We're not expecting having to happen and then Bitcoin to just rock and roll. Right? The having is supposed to be this Friday. We can go and see just to make sure, but I'm pretty sure... April 19, April 19. So we got the having pretty much situated there. Um, if anybody's new and they haven't been with us and they don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to the having, we'll just go over here and look at it real quick. All right, so I'm going to pull this up on a weekly. Here's every having, like here's last having, right? It pretty much traded sideways for multiple weeks. Ten weeks before it actually started to break out. And then it, before it started to run. So it took a while of accumulation before you actually got that move. And then here was the halving before that. You actually sold off right before the halving. And then sold off a little bit after the halving. So... What's this? This is when the having happens. You had one bullish week, one, two, three bullish or bearish weeks, and then three weeks of sideways. So that's another, what, 10, 11, 12, 13 weeks before it actually started to climb. I mean, that doesn't mean that's what's going to happen this time, right? But in order for us to get bullish again, we need this to cull down. It's in, I don't like to buy Bitcoin or any asset for that matter when it's setting above 70 because you're, you're already massively overbought. Now, we know that it can go much higher than overbought. 
We know that. But the buying opportunities are, are pretty much when you're oversold, not overbought. So, I mean, I don't think you're going to reach oversold. But I do believe you can cool off, get down into the 60 area or whatnot, find support, and then trade sideways for multiple weeks, and then look to buy whatever weekly support is formed, wherever that may be. Maybe it wants to retest the 2022 yearly open. Who knows? We'll just have to wait until it happens. We have to wait till it happens. All right. So that's that. Um, let's see here. What else? Anything else? Anything else? Let's go look over here. See how Duolingo is doing. Not doing good. We were looking for this to actually hold. But the majority of the market was bearish. This is an energy play. It's pulling back. Another energy play that's pulling back. More energy, Conoco Phillips, and then obviously Exxon Mobil all pulling back. That's because oil is pulling back currently. This one has earnings the week after next. Starbucks got creamed. Apple's still getting not so good. Uh, we'll watch 171.21. I don't know why. That might be an old weekly support it is it's also going to be weekly demand so if last week's rally was true we want to see it hold support here so if you want to buy apple you could look to buy that upon a closure today back above 171.21 your stop loss is going to be extremely wide extremely wide or you could give it a day or two to see if it builds in support here and then starts to go again and then you could just buy an at the money call or an at or a, like a five dollar wide call spread let's see if the since the skew's gotten lower let's see if there is any bullish spreads no, it still doesn't work. I mean, you can still pull one on. It's just not going to be cheap. Because the skew's all jacked up. You could go closer term and do like a $2.50 wide spread. I could put a $2.50 wide spread on for two thirty-five. dollars It still isn't any good because your max profit's only one fifteen. dollars When I put on a spread, I want... I want what I pay for it to be much less than the max profit because you're literally paying more than you can make on the trade. And I, I don't typically like that. But it is it does make it easier to manage your risk, obviously, but still, I like to try to get in those trades where I can make the max amount of money possible. Good morning, bravo. All right, does anybody got any questions? We're coming up on an hour here. I want to try to keep it around there. Uh, Forex is just, you know, we're going to be watching these other cross pairs like Aussie CAD, Aussie Swiss, um, you know, your Euro Aussies, Euro CADs, stuff like that instead of dollar pairs because dollar pairs are going to be difficult to trade with the dollar you know being bullish uh but this was a pretty pretty extensive move here on your usd and then the pound dollar same thing ultimately that trend line holding up there again the pound dropping back down So it might, we could potentially get in a short trade again upon a retest of 125.40, maybe. Uh, 
but there's nothing to do down here. I wouldn't even buy it down here. I mean, it did tag a daily support level here, but I mean, at best, it's just a bounce play. Till the dollar starts to pull back a little bit. I don't know what all that garbage is. I think these are CPIs. Yeah, CPIs. I stopped doing that a long time ago, though. Because I've been just looking at this chart instead. Uh, Bitcoin's got a daily support here. That's the entry of the short position. We did take out this near-term support with this close yesterday. We also took out this support here. You can see that it did hold here and here and then there, there. But finally yesterday it took it out. So we're looking for continuation to the downside right now on Bitcoin unless it can hold support here. Next support's going to be all the way down there. 61206. What do I think of Gala? All right, so basically Bitcoin is like the ocean and your altcoins are boats that sit in the ocean. The ocean has tides. So when the tide raises, you know, when Bitcoin goes up, a lot of these will follow it. And when Bitcoin pulls back, a lot of these will follow it. Uh, this looks like a pretty severe pullback, though. This looks more like Ethereum. You've already pulled back 61%. I mean, I don't know of anything that's that's going on with this. I don't know if there's like really good news or something that makes you want to buy it or you just bought it because it was ripping and you think this is a deep enough correction. If it is, I mean, it's definitely deep enough. You're basing at around the 200 exponential. So you would, you would definitely want to see it hold support here. If it's unable to hold support here, the next area to look for support is going to be around the 200. It's simple. This thing doesn't even have a 200 week. Why? Because it doesn't have 200 weekly candles. Gotcha. All right, so we can't look at a 200 weekly. So yeah, you, you want to see this 200 simple hold if you break down where it's currently at. But like I said, a 61% correction, that's, that's pretty big. Um, but with the Bitcoin having coming up, the best you could hope for is, is th that it catches support here around the 200 exponential. And then starts to move back to the upside or at least at the very least consolidates for a period of time here. Then you could look to buy daily support and maybe you get a bounce out of it. Maybe you don't. It's having difficult time pulling it up here, but. I mean, this thing is trading a drop in the bucket of what it did do. Back in its glory days. If you once you put this in the comparison here to here, I mean it's like, nah. I don't like it at all. It looks almost like a like what we would classify a shit coin. But it is possible that I find support. I mean your moving average structure is considered bullish for now. When it rotate when it rotates back into this is when it looks not so good. But I mean at that point it's so cheap people will just buy it.
So yeah, I would watch that zero spot zero four zero level. This daily support right here. It seems to be what's acting as support near term. And since you got the 200 under you there, maybe it finds support and maybe you get a bounce. But I mean, it, this is heavy selling pressure. You never want to see it give away a move like this. You want to see, whenever you see a breakout like this, you want to see a consolidation and then higher highs and higher lows. You don't want to see something just, you know, give it a nice big move for like one or two weeks and then give it all back. That's not really ever a good sim, a good signal. Yeah, this thing should have held support up here and then started to climb slowly back to the upside if there is legitimate buyers in it. And whoever owns the most amount of this can definitely affect the market. I don't see why they would want to sell at 80, it's 8 cents, but whatever. I mean, at once upon a time, this thing was trading at almost a dollar. 88 cents, like you're 99,999% down off of the highs. It's like bad. That would not be a fair estimation. I gotta be close. All right, ninety-five percent off. Yeah, I think there are better things to invest in, unless unless they've had a magnificent breakthrough in technology or something. <laughs> <clears throat> What price should it reach? Nobody knows that. Nobody knows that, buddy. Um, whenever people ask me that question, it it kind of boggles my mind to think that anybody can can tell you what price it's going to stop at. Nah. I can show you areas of potential support and resistance, but it does not mean the marketplace will turn there. Now, we that's where we initially take our trades, basically. But they don't always win because we don't know what price is going to do. For me to tell you what price it should reach, that would infer that I know somehow magically what it's going to do. And I just don't. That's not reality. Nobody alive can do that. Nobody knows what Bitcoin is going to do. All we have is past price action to look at. And then we can look for levels, objective price levels where price has shown interest at in the past and set our risk parameters up in the right way and either A, make money or B, lose money. That's the only outcomes. But, I mean, you're not buying it at a terribly bad spot. 62,300, I mean, you're just barely... down on that position just barely i mean price is currently at 665 no that's 62344 so literally you're 44 dollars in the hole We'll see what it does. I mean, it's at an area of potential support. But the bad part about it is that you broke down yesterday. That's a downside continuation candle. And today, you retested that exact support and rolled over. So... I mean, it wasn't a perfect test, but if you go intraday, you'll see the intraday chart where price eased its way up there, but was unable to make it. But it is bouncing here. So we just keep an eye on it. Be patient. 
if you lose 61,906, the next area that I'm looking for of a test would be 59,224. All right. If we lose this support, you're probably going to smoke this low. And then if you kick downside continuation, I would target this low here. <clears throat> no, there's no, uh, Toby, there, there, I had, I see no reason to expect a multi year bear market. None at all. You don't have 1000% moves in technology and stuff like that for like a solid year and a half and then go into a multi-year bear market. You're talking about a bubble and a bubble we are not in. All right. Whenever you're in a bubble, the S uh, like. Just one general rule for an S&P 500 bubble is an S&P 500 doubling in price in three years. So like if the S&P 500 was to reach 10K by 2026, then yeah, I would say you're probably in a bubble, right? That, that we're not in a bubble an AI bubble is not here. And another reason I can tell you that we're not in a bubble is simple. We don't see a bunch of fresh I, uh, uh, IPO AI stocks, right? If AI was a bubble right now, then basically every Tom, Dick and Harry company out there that is doing anything to do with AI would be opening with IPOs and SPACs. And those IPOs and SPACs would be mooning in like one or two days. That is not happening. In fact, the amount of IPOs that have opened last year and this year are significantly down from just normal uh, boom bust cycles, let alone a bubble. Now, if you want to argue that the Fed has artificially created a bubble with liquidity, okay, yeah. But here's the thing, if they can artificially continue with that, then what makes you think that they're not just going to do the same thing again, right? The rich stay rich for a reason. The poor stay poor for a reason. Yeah. And another slogan that I would give you is this. I can't remember the guy who wrote it. And I'm sure if I dug through some of my files, I could find the exact quote, but it goes something like this. More money is lost from people looking for corrections in bear markets than is lost just by simply buying and holding. Think about that for one second. People lose more money by trying to time corrections in bear markets than they would have if they would have just bought and held buy and hold baby buy and hold now day traders are able to sometimes be successful in calling near-term corrections as i showed at the beginning of the stream Right, I just closed out three positions that were all three in profits thanks to the market rolling over. But if the market wouldn't have rolled over, I would have been deeper in the red. <laughs> right? Because obviously the market can continue to go higher. But Bitcoin was my signal that we were probably close to a near-term top in the S&Ps. And it took a little while, but ultimately here it is. And this is just nothing more than a near-term correction. You're still trading within the option expected weekly move. So think about that too. You're not breaching expected moves. You're, you're, you're staying within them. If anything, I can show you that you've broken out to the upside of the expected move more than you've broken out to the downside of the expected move. So when you start, like you just watch my Twitter every week, I post this same chart here. 
right? I give you the numbers where to look for that expected range. In a bear market, you will be breaking these moves and closing like this, right? And then the next week, you might have a huge bullish candle that rips and roars. And then the second candle does something like that. That is what you would be looking for to say, okay, something else is up here. This is a very controlled move. These moves, like, yeah, 50, this was a 50 handle move. That's a big move, right? In one day for the S&P, especially since it's been having 20 handle days, most days. So yeah, we do have volatility out there, but we knew we had volatility. We've been watching the VIX. The S&Ps have been making fresh all-time highs and the VIX has not been making fresh lows. In fact, it had been making higher highs or higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. So we knew that there was a period of risk or we were in a period of volatility or volatility was creeping up soon. But I mean, this, this is pretty, this is a pretty substantial move. It is more substantial than this pullback. It's not more substantial than the October lows though. So if the VIX climbs and maintains bullish continuation above $23, then one could probably argue that you're going to see a pretty sizable downside move on the S and P's. Uh, but generally it's, it's not that bad. And it, let's pull up market watch real fast and just give it a second here to see index watch. And we just want the 100. We don't, we don't want, we just want the top 100 stocks in the S and P. So yeah, I mean you've got you've got sixty three down declining stocks today, and you got thirty eight advancing stocks today, right? So it does look like there is a little bit more downside potential for today than upside, but this doesn't always matter. All right, I seen this one time be at eighty downside stocks and 20 advancing and since the 20 that were advancing were like the five biggest market cap stocks in the whole s p's it literally made the market bullish for the day <clears throat> watch tech if tech begins to roll over and roll over severely then yeah one could potentially say that we may have a near-term top for a while but so far, this is not a significant move. It looks similar to something like this, all right? But I would love to see this same thing play out again, right? Do, 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 do. And then back to up. I just want to see it trade back and forth. There's so much money to be made when markets do that. When it's just straight one direction, it's it's hard to make money unless you are got in low and you held on to it. But trying to sell the highs, nah. I mean, if a war breaks out, like a full-fledged war with Russia and the U.S., China, and the whole Middle East, then yeah, the S&Ps are probably going to roll over. I mean... If inflation rocket ships back up to nine, then yeah, the markets are probably going to roll over. But these are all scenarios that literally have to happen for that to happen. If you want to short it up here and you think this is the high, give it a shot. Just make sure you protect your risk. Please protect your risk. Uh, but I don't think we're entering a multi-year multi, multi -year bear market. At best, I think you're going to see a sideways choppy market for a couple weeks to a couple months while the buyers re-engage it. There's so much money out there still. If the yield curve rolls back over, I mean, we're still, the yields curve still inverted. I mean, there's a lot of doom and gloomers out there. A lot of people, I understand 
I mean, there's one guy that's literally started his YouTube channel three years ago and started talking about macroeconomics and this and that. And every thumbnail he puts out is like, the, 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 the end is near or, oh my God, we're all about to get wrecked or like just these crazy thumbnails. And the, he has literally been wrong since his YouTube channel has been out, but yet he's growing because people love fear. They love it. They eat it up. They soak it up. Well, in the meantime, I told everybody to be buyers at the beginning of 2023. Had you done that, you'd be up so big by now. You would be laughing at those bear market trolls out there. This wasn't even a multi-year bear market, right? It was a one-year bear market. And let's not forget, also, the market started raising when the Fed was hiking. Not lowering, they were hiking and aggressively hiking. The markets were going up. The markets only came down because of inflation. Fed got control of inflation, the markets went right back up. So this inflation, last inflation print is the reason why this thing literally rolled over. And that has to do with oil. Mostly. It's an easy read. But I don't think you're going to get... You're definitely not going to get the six cuts that the market was pricing in. So a small move back down is to be expected. But then, ultimately, I suspect the bulls will step right back up. As long as, like I said, you know, World War III doesn't break out and the sky doesn't fall and the sun doesn't have a solar eclipse that, or a, what is it called? A solar flare that's going to nuke the earth. And barring any of that stuff, I think the market's going to be just fine. It has been for, you know, since the, since America has been a thing. Can you please look at dot? Absolutely. All right. Yeah. It's getting cremated as well. So, <clears throat> Easy way to tell if your asset's doing good or bad. You're down 45%. Not so good, right? This comes in the realm of Tesla. With that being said, you are also red on the year. But not by much. Here, the easiest way to do that is just go straight to the 12 month chart and then booyah, right? That's, that's literally the quickest way to do it. There you go. So there's your 2024 yearly opening range. You lost it. It's bearish now. Will it stay bearish? I don't know. I do not know. Um, but it's definitely not a good look, right? It's definitely not a good look. But we haven't got to the having yet. So that doesn't mean that you have to give up on your favorite cryptocurrency just yet. But you do have to manage your risk always when you're in the markets. Always. You have to manage your risk. So that's what it, that's what that's what you look like right now. Huge rally. This should have held us support in my book, but this was a massive drop. You can see how many people literally bought there. You can tell that so many people literally bought there because of the size of the move lower. All the people that bought here got stopped out. Boom, boom, boom causing a cascade event. So until there's more demand, right now there's more supply than demand. People are taking profits on these more risky 
of risk assets. Crypto is the riskiest of risk assets in the planet. But it's it's not looking good. And you did ultimately take out this swing low though. So I would kind of watch that area and just see if it's able to hold support around this area. If it is, then maybe you could look for a retest of the 2024 yearly open. Maybe. If you start closing dailies and weeklies below this, then, then you're probably coming back to test 2023 yearly opening range. <clears throat> Unfortunately, they just could not defend 2024's, you know, move. But they could buy it down here for sure. I'm right now I'm I am I am all time bullish on Bitcoin. Like long term I'm always bullish on Bitcoin. But I do have a day trade position on that I opened yesterday that is a short. All right. So I mean I day trade every day, five days a week. If I find a trade, if I find a trade, if I get in a trade and I don't get stopped out, then I try to stay in that trade as long as possible. But right now, for the near term, I do have a short on Bitcoin. But long term, I am bullish Bitcoin. We haven't had the halving yet. We got to see, you know, talk to me three months after we've had the halving. If Bitcoin is continuing to go lower after we had the halving, then we could probably say that, yeah, it's it's probably the, the, the halving cycles are probably done. And I, my opinion, that would cause a lot of people to sell. I mean, most of the people that are in Bitcoin now are only in it because they think it can only go up. And that is based on the halvings. I mean, that is their direct evidence that it will only always go up in value. So as long as that trend continues, I will remain bullish on Bitcoin. But let me explain something. I am not your bull tart. I will not set in Bitcoin all the way to zero. I will sell every ounce of Bitcoin that I own if I even get wind that it could potentially be over for Bitcoin. I will get out of it. It's about, you know, growing wealth. It's not about believing in something so much to the point it makes you broke. That is not a good strategy for wealth creation, in my opinion. I built this channel to help people create wealth, not to lose it on a speculative asset class, right? That's also why we do Forex and stocks and options and everything else. If I truly only believed that Bitcoin was the way and the light in the future, then obviously I would only trade Bitcoin. Now, with that being said, there are tradable, like daily tradable things that take place in Bitcoin every single day almost. I knew I do know a couple of traders that only trade Bitcoin because it offers up volatility. An asset that can move more than 2% in a day is a great asset to trade. But is it a great asset to own and hold forever? We'll see. Only time will tell. I think it's good that there are ETFs now. I think that will ultimately help Bitcoin in the long term. Because people don't need to get on offshore exchanges to participate in Bitcoin's rallies. They can simply do it via their stock account or their stock market brokerage account, which is a beautiful thing. But I do believe, you know, long term, as of right now, Bitcoin will go higher. Um, can ask a good uh, ask any good indicators for daily spot trading. 
<clears throat> well, I use leverage. I don't do spot trading. Um, I think you're asking for indicators for like helping you on a day to day basis. Uh, the only indicators that I basically use are the moving averages. And I only look at these on a daily, weekly time frame. And then obviously just your standard RSI. Because this is your momentum indicator. It shows you where the momentum is heading, which could literally help. Typically, the way we look at this is any time that you're up and above the, fi the 50, which is a solid white line here, then the bulls are in control. Whenever you're below the 50, typically, you would look for the bears to be in control. But occasionally you'll have times like this where you're you know getting very low on the daily and then all of a sudden it breaks back out well on a situation like this this is when you would want to flip your daily bias from bearish to bullish i mean i got a whole list of videos that can teach you how to how to do day trades but like i said i use leverage but i don't suggest I mean, spot trading would be better until you are actually able to squeak out a profit over a long period of time. Basically, you need to be able to beat the S&P 500 on a yearly basis. If you can't do that, then you're, then trading probably isn't for you. All right. So, yeah, you should be able to at least grow your, your, your account by 12% per year easily that's one percent a month it seems very easy and easily achievable but you'd be surprised how many people can't do that uh cardano yeah there's another one who has lost its yearly opening range this one has went all the way back down to 39 cents. That's your last area of accumulation. I don't want to see it lose this support. If it loses 35 cents, I would probably bail. Right? Here's a very big formation of consolidation and when you broke out of it boom but you're back in it so like these two areas for me they have to hold if there's going to be any more bullishness to this asset uh, i don't like i don't know the white papers on it or anything like that brandon is more suited to do stuff like that than i am i'm more of a technical guy I only trade by price action and what price action is doing. Hence the reason I have a bearish position on Bitcoin currently. But I was bullish on Bitcoin. It wasn't until it made that lower high and started to roll over with volatility that caused me to get into a short trade. This is volatility. This is this. Is a, those are two big ass down days. Uh, you probably won't see nothing like that again for at least 10 days. You'll probably trade sideways in this area for multiple days. And you want to see these gains get accumulate or these losses get accumulated. But you definitely don't want to see it break below this region here because this region here is where you ultimately got a lot of accumulation and the breakout. But the breakout was not able to maintain itself. So that tells me inherently that there's more supply in these higher prices than there is demand for the product. I mean, there's your lows right there. You're not far from your lows. Like if you strike a Fibonacci retracement from this all time low right here up to the high right there. If I can get it.
Like you're you're right at around a six one eight retracement. Losing this area down here would put you where you don't really want to be. Right? I mean, I have seen buyers step back in at these lows, but at like a major retracement level like that. And it's also funny that that just also happens to be right where I put that line. So that's the price I would watch. 35 cents. You don't want to see it get lower than that. If it does, then I would just simply wait for um, some kind of bullish divergent signal on the weekly before I'd look to buy it again. Uh, dot. I think we looked at dot. Maybe not. Yeah, but we did. Yeah, we looked at dot. It's it doesn't look good either. It doesn't look like it's it's lost as much. Same scenario here. I mean, you have a weekly support right there as well. Let me make it bigger for you if you're on mobile. This weekly support would also be the seven eight uh, seven eight six retracement. That's coming in right around five dollars and thirty four cents. You do not want to see it lose that area. I mean, when you look at this on the weekly, it really looks bad. Especially, I mean, if you put it on log, it still looks really bad. Longer term, people are going to say this is an inverted head and shoulders, but I disagree. I disagree. For an asset to continue, you want to see it be able to maintain a bullish posture above your higher levels. That shows that there is solid growth coming into the asset. I max my long term, like five year plus horizon on Bitcoin obviously is is more right. I mean, higher than where it is. And that's just by going on what I know with the having and the four year cycles and stuff like that. Right. I mean, if the way Bitcoin was built and the way it still looks on a chart, <clears throat> it looks good. Right. Typically, when you're looking for a long term investment vehicle, such as Bitcoin or any other asset class, for that matter, you want to see a chart that is moving from the bottom left hand corner to the top right hand corner of the screen. That's basically OK. You see how dot is doing the opposite of that. It's literally moving down. Yeah, it got a nice bounce here that lasted for two years, but you're you're almost to the seven one eight or seven three eight or whatever retracement level on this. Well, not this one, but the one we had seen before. That's not something that I would want to invest in. Whereas if you look at Bitcoin, it's it looks good, right? It's going from the bottom right to the top left. It looks good long term. So as long as Bitcoin is, is looks like this, then yeah, I like it long term. The problem with Bitcoin is most people look at it on log and you don't realize, but you're sitting at $62,000 right now per Bitcoin. And just a year and a quarter ago, you were sitting at $16,000. That is a lot of volatility. So Bitcoin is a very extremely volatile animal. What I would suggest you do if you're looking for a long term trade plan for Bitcoin, like say you missed last year's or not last year, but say you missed the 2020 bull market, right? My best advice to you would be buy Bitcoin 
when you are oversold on the weekly time frame. Don't do it with mad leverage. Just buy enough so that way you can say you own some. And then buy it again anytime you get close to it. And then buy it again when you get back into it. And just keep doing that. And then over time, in Bitcoin's entire history, just buying the weekly oversold has been a fantastic strategy. And I brought that up last year in 2023. I literally was telling people that this is the time to buy. Now, obviously, it did make lower lows, but still ultimately looked what happened after, right? It broke out and maintained that bullish posture. Boom, up it went. That's generally what you want to see in a long-term investing vehicle. But it is extremely volatile. So like, <clears throat> because I started trading Bitcoin late, like I started trading Bitcoin over in here, I didn't own a lot of it, right? I just kept trading it. Now that, you know, we, I nailed this bull market, I nailed this bear market, and I nailed this bull market, I had built up a significant amount of it. So much so to where like just a $1,000 move on Bitcoin was affecting the portfolio overall too much for me to be comfortable with. So when we hit my 2023 yearly target of 35K, I took one third of my Bitcoin holdings out. And that's essentially what I've been living on since, right? Just those profits because it just... I was like, this is just getting too much. I don't want to have this much in something that, that could literally, you know, fall from the freaking sky. So I took profits, but I still kept the two thirds in it and have been building since more. So now I'm better than I was before. But that has a lot to do with the fact that it moved way up. <laughs> and made fresh all-time highs. So it is a very volatile asset class. And like I said, we've never seen it do what it did this year, like make fresh all-time highs into the having before the having. That's never happened before. So hopefully that can be attributed to the, to the ETFs. And hopefully we see Bitcoin control get into some consolidation down here and we see it rip for the next year and a half or two. I would love for that to happen. So as long as Bitcoin looks good to me like this, then I will keep trading it, keep investing in it. When it changes, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to see it revisit these lows. If it does, like, that portfolio would be decimated. So we just, we have to watch it, and we have to watch it closely. I don't want to see it get back down to 35K. But I do know that that is an old monthly support, and it is a possibility of a retest of that. There's your old monthly support. There's the breakdown. That's why I took profits on this candle. Because I didn't expect this to happen. I expected it to hit that and then trade back down to support into the having and then go. But instead, it just kept going. <laughs> but so did the S&P 500. So did NVIDIA. So did Microsoft, so did, you know what I'm saying, Amazon, so did Google, so did the Qs, the IWM, not so much, but you get what I'm saying, right? We were in a liquidity cycle. Uh, that liquidity cycle has not turned yet as far as I'm aware. But 
But yeah, we definitely needed to see a pullback. This is a monthly time frame and we're overbought. Like generally that only happens at the end of the bull market phases for Bitcoin. Here you got massively overbought, but you know, that's different. Overbought and overbought smaller. But we would love to see it get big like this one more time, at least because that would put Bitcoin well above $100,000. But that's just, that's not reality either. We have to live in reality. So for a long-term investment plan on Bitcoin, just buy weekly oversold levels. You will get another one. Hopefully it's it's much higher than where we are now. That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Be it would be lovely, but I mean, what are the odds of that happening? We won't we don't know. But yeah, I am very much still bullish on it. I mean, you have to be bullish on this chart, guys. You have to be. But, you know, a day trade, like a near-term short, doesn't mean anything for my long-term thesis. I wouldn't be still trading Bitcoin to make more Bitcoin if I didn't believe in Bitcoin. That's why I short the inverse swap contract so I can make more Bitcoin. I want to own as much of it as possible. One day retire. Have enough of it anyways to retire. Um, what's up, Michelle? I have only two X, so keeping my coins good. Yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, you don't want to lose them. Okay, if I were going to buy it, at what part, what price point would you start to re-enter Bitcoin if you sell the top? Well, I don't know if this is going to be the top, but if you did sell up here, I would start to re-enter again around 42 because that's the yearly opening range. <clears throat> but I wouldn't enter heavy there because, in my opinion, if we get back there, that could that could be very bad for 2024. The first, qu first quarter of 2024 was a good one for Bitcoin. Now we're in the second quarter. This was a good quarter. It was a nice close. It looks good, right? Big, strong close above that. Beautiful. We don't want to see an engulfing on a quarterly basis. That wouldn't look pretty. I, like That's the only one you got. I don't think there is one on the BLX either. But we can go look real quick. I don't think there is an engulfing quarterly. No, there's not. But that doesn't mean there, there can't be one. This is a bearish engulfing quarterly, but... Well, did it take out the high? What was the high? 10.440. 10 504 so it did take out the high so this is a bearish engulfing quarterly candle on bitcoin i don't want to see that this looks like an expansion i wish we would have got more of this right expansion huge expansion and then sideways expansion but stayed well within that range and then came back down retested the bottom in the range expansion again instead of just come down expand consolidate expand expand consolidate consolidate expand expand would be fantastic who knows who knows if that's what we get or not i mean i can't see into the future i wish i could I wish I could tell you guys, yeah, just buy it now because it's going to be worth $5 million in 10 years. 
if I could tell you that, and if I knew that was going to happen, I'm sure you would all buy it with everything you had. But I can't. Um, but yeah, I would be very, very afraid if we got back down here. At that point, I would probably wait to rebuy around 26,840 and then ultimately 16. But if you start to get into a cascade like that, it's not going to look great. Some people think we'll never see 16,000 again, but who knows? We all thought we wouldn't see 19,000 again or 20,000 again, but we did. Not only did we see it, we were under it for like, what, nine months? Not fun. Then everything was broken. But right now, it still looks okay. You're still trading inside of a range. Until we take out this low, you're still trading in a range. And a range is good because it... It is consolidation. <clears throat> Where can we trade or buy metal futures? Um, that would depend on where you live. If you live in America, you can trade metal futures on Tasty Trade. You can trade metal futures on um, Charles Schwab. Uh, there's a bunch of brokerages that will allow you to trade uh, metal futures, but I can trade metal futures on Tasty. This is Tasty here, right? This is Aussie dollar futures. I can trade all of this stuff, right? I can trade any futures product I want as long as I have the margin in the account to do so. Some of those contracts are expensive. Like some of them, I don't know exactly how much it is to trade a gold futures, for instance. But I can go to bar chart, see what gold futures would be. Let's see. Barchart.com. Not bar charts. Plural, just singular, barchart.com forward slash futures. It will show you the symbol. Over here is metals, so GC. So on Tasty, here I would just simply type in forward slash GC, pull it up, and that will be gold futures. Now, I can trade gold futures options contracts like this, or I can simply trade gold futures spot price like this. Like this. So it'd be simply like trading futures, right? But buy to open one contract would cost what? It doesn't tell me, but it says this doesn't have enough buying power to do this. It looks like it would be around $2,300. No, it's much more than that. It's probably like five grand. Or six grand. I don't know exactly how much it is. I'm sure you could find out. But yeah, any brokerage, as far as I know of, you just have to get approved to be able to trade futures. And in order to get approved to trade futures, like I have a link in the description for Tasty Trade. If you want to, you know, trade futures on Tasty Trade, you can use that link. I don't get paid for that. Um, when you set it up, you actually deposit money. You have to click that you want to trade futures. You got to click an area. It says uh, futures. Do you want access to trade futures contracts? And you say yes. And then boom. 
you can trade futures contracts. I think I wish this would tell you like the actual what it costs per contract though. But that's a small account. You know what I mean? The small account is the account that I got pulled up. It's a very small account. But yeah, hopefully that helps. <clears throat> I have half my life savings in SEI from 20 cents. Half your life savings. Man, you are ballsy. What I would do, well, I don't know that. I don't know if that's a su substantial amount of money or not. If it is what I would tell you to do, but I ain't telling you to do this because I am not a financial advisor. But if you bought at 20 cents, then that means you've doubled your life savings. Since you are in a period of risk where the market is literally coming back down, I would go ahead and take half out or more even, then put it back into savings and use your profits to, to hold, right? That would be the safer way. So that way you didn't lose your life savings, right? Does that make sense? Because, I mean, I know if I lost my life savings on one trade, I would be highly upset. So if it was, that's what I would do. I would be like, wow, since I've doubled my life savings, I'm going to take, I don't know, say 70% of that put it back in a in a safe asset or you could put it in in bonds or something t bills or something to generate a 5% return per year that way you know you don't ever lose that money and then just use a majority of the or some you know 25% of the profits you generated and then hold the that so that way, if you, if it ends up going back down to, you know, nine cents, you won't lose 50% of your life savings. You will only lose 50% of the profits you made from that trade. Good trade. But I mean, if looking at it in hindsight, it, oh my God. I mean, you quadrupled your life savings had you got out up there. That's just how fast it can change. That's literally just six weeks. Six weeks, this thing lost half its value. Boom. It's a very, very, very volatile asset. But I am not a financial advisor. But definitely that's how I would play that. I know other people that, that got that crazy on Bitcoin when Bitcoin was trading at around four grand. That was different. We knew then that the Fed, I mean, the Fed literally came out and said, yo, we're going to put a backstop. And we also knew that Bitcoin was trading pretty much with risk assets at that point. So it was a safe bet. I don't know what this is. Like, I've never even heard of this. And if this was like something in in important or something special you know obviously i would have heard about it i would think by now i mean it's been trading since last year but i haven't so i doubt it's very important or popular but that's just my opinion also i'm not saying that to upset you in any way i'm just i would while you still have double your life savings i would protect your money that's what trading and investing is about it's about making a gain on your investment you have done that so now tuck that investment safely away back into something safe 
along with a little bit more. So that way you can say, I made money on that trade. Even if it goes to zero, you will have made money on that trade. Instead of just letting it all ride on red. That's just gambling at that point. Because you do not know what this thing is going to do. And that's the way to make wealth over time. Good morning, Johan. Uh, the other half is spot Bitcoin moisturized in my line. I got you. Okay, well, that's good. I mean, I guess that's still a significant amount. But at this point, I have a significant amount of my net worth in Bitcoin as well. Like I said, I mean, the trade right now that I'm in is up 190% or 187%. So it's okay, but just be careful. It's, I mean, I hate to see people lose everything when they had a chance to literally think about it objectively and be like, did I make money? Yes. Should I protect that money? Yes. Okay. Let's get it out of there. Boom, boom. Let's put it into something safe. That way you still have that money and it's always going to be there. And then you can use those profits to grow those profits into more money. And then you just keep doing that over and over and over again. And you keep growing that wad. Keep growing it and growing it and growing it. But I, I don't know what this is. I would have to do some investigative reporting on this to see if it's worth anything or not. <clears throat> Chart don't look too bad. Obviously, this candle, if that's a real wick, oh my gosh. That was a significant move in a week's time. But this looks good. This thing's not been trading for very long. I mean, it looks like... What it looks like to me is whoever owned this thing obviously sold a lot at the top and then sold more when it made fresh all-time highs. That's what it looks like to me. Now, granted, it did take three, two months of sell side to cause this thing to reverse. But it did ultimately reverse. I'll look into it. Uh, can I check Boston Protocol? I'm still 2x after that dump. See, these you guys got to know when to take profits. I, I don't know this ticker. Is it just Boston USDT? Yeah, it looks like it is. I can't trade KuCoin anymore. I keep getting texts from KuCoin, or I don't know if it's actually KuCoin or whoever else, but uh, yeah, I mean, this chart doesn't look terrible. I mean, if you look at the whole chart, it doesn't look good, but if you look at it from like September of two, last year, it looks good. And I... Yeah, you could call that a dump. It's roughly about 40% you've lost. Anytime something moves more than 20%, it can be considered a dump. <clears throat> um, looks like it's trying to hold daily support, but here's the thing. If it loses daily support, it doesn't have another level of potential support until all the way down here. So if you lose 51 cents, there's a huge possibility you're going to go to 41 cents. Once again, you guys know what I would do. I've already told you, if you're still listening, I always, always take profits. Always. That's what separates me from winners and losers. Always take profits. You just watched me close out two or three huge trades that literally brought the account back into life, right? 
just to do that, just to bring the account back to life. So now it's like, okay, now I can start fresh. Starting fresh from day one and then grow it from there. You got to take those profits. What's the point? If you set in something thinking it's going to freaking five million X, like all these other crypto, some of these crypto assets do not ever blow up. Some of them don't. Some do, some don't. But it is a very risky asset class. Be careful. It looks good. Watch 41 cents. Uh, you talked about buying Bitcoin when RSI is on weekly oversold. Yeah. Why not sell now as it's overbought? You can. You absolutely can, Madge. 100%. 100%, depending on where you bought, how much you're up. I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into it, obviously. I wouldn't sell if I was losing. At that point, you become a lifelong hodler. If you're up nicely, yeah, take profits because you will get a chance again. It might be two, three years down the road, but ultimately you will get a chance. These things don't just go straight up all the time. There are long periods of time where it seems like they do, but ultimately, over a period of 20 years, you're going to get multiple opportunities to reinvest. You just will. Especially if Bitcoin is going to operate the way it is supposed to operate. Um... Why do you trade full time? I don't. Uh, Bitcoin techie, I'm usually done around 10, 30, 11 o'clock, bub. Or, you know, buddy. I can call you buddy. What? Right? You're my buddy. I, I, uh, I, I, I'm usually done around 11. Most of the time, I'm just answering questions after 11. To four people in the Discord, or if someone asks a question on the YouTube channel, I usually get back to them the next day. Whenever I get a pop up, uh, I don't sit in front of my, I, I have an office that is in my house and that office, I have a big, huge computer that I put a ton of money in and five monitors. <clears throat> I do not sit in front of these monitors in this chair all day long, every single day. There's no point after about 11 o'clock, your day trading opportunities are usually gone right? As far as the early morning volatility goes from like 11 to three, you get a lot of sideways choppy, you know, movement. And then around three, I'll watch the markets from three to close, right? And if, if I'm in an open position on Bitcoin, I have a laptop that I have in the living room that I just keep open all the time and I have the screensaver turned off and I just watch it on a black screen essentially. I just watch price to see how the position's going and whatnot. And that's also the computer I'm usually answering questions on throughout the day. But I don't I don't I I go out, I do things all the time. Or just go lay down on the couch and take a nap. I do that quite frequently as well. So yeah, I I I don't. I'm not setting in the office full time. No, I, it would drive me bonkers to set in this office all day long, every single day. Uh, when, uh, if so, when did you decide to make that transition? Is there a specific net worth one should aim for before trading full time? You should be able to at least make what you're making with your job, right? And do that at least for two years. If you can make more trading than you can make working your full-time job, and you can do that through bull markets and bear markets, then I would say you're there. Just give your boss a month notice. That way there's no bad feelings, right? Don't just up and quit. And if you don't make it, you need to go back to work and expect them to hire you again. I left 
when I left my job, I gave my boss a month's notice. I was like, look, I'm done, right? I've I found out a better way or an easier way to make the money that I need. Now, with that being said, I also live within my means. I don't go out there and drop large sums of money on stupid stuff. Like, right? I'm not, I'm not like, I don't have any credit cards or nothing like that. No debt, just paying my monthly bills, insurance, stuff like that, right? Stuff like that. Electricity, internet, all that good stuff. And just make sure that you can, you know, maintain those payments because like there, there are times that go, I, I'm not making withdrawals once a week. I make large withdrawals occasionally, right? So that way I can maintain what I need to be able to maintain for the next few months. As long as you can do that, you can make the transition. Now, if you don't make a lot of money and you have a lot of bills, like I've seen this happen before where like it's a married couple and the husband wants to take over the reins of being a day trader, but what he's not factoring in is he's not factoring in his wife's salary as well. Um, also there, there are disadvantages for tax purposes. I mean, you just really got to do your due diligence. You will know when you're ready, but definitely give it at least two years. Don't jump out too quick because you may quit your job and then need to go right back in three months. I've seen that happen too. It's just, it's, it's up to the individual. You got to be able to control your spending. You, you just buy the necessities. You don't, you know, blow your money on, on cool stuff just because you have it. Cause that can hurt you quickly. Like when I first started it, it, that I did that a lot. I bought a lot of useless stuff. I didn't need probably. Yeah. Don't do that. Just, you know, live the life that you live now and go for it. Hopefully that helps. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Your your life situation is obviously going to be much different than mine. So, like, it's not as easy for me to tell you when or how. I just knew when I could. Uh, thank you for the question. I live in Canada. I was looking for lithium and cobalt. You were looking for lithium and cobalt? Uh, whew. I don't know either one of those ticker symbols. Let me think here. Lithium. I don't know if that's the actual chart. If you can give me ticker symbols, I mean, I'll look. No, nah, this looks like some kind of ETF. I don't know. I can't even get candles on this thing. So I don't know what that's about. Yeah, I don't know the ticker for lithium. I don't ever I don't ever trade it. Same goes for cobalt. I'm sure there are stocks. Cobalt futures. Oh no, that doesn't work. There's nothing there either. Yeah, I, I don't know the ticker symbols. I would need the ticker symbols in order to do that. What's up, Sloth Bag? Yeah, you're definitely my buddy. All right. So if there are no more other questions, yeah, this does look like an actual futures contract, COB one exclamation point, but there literally is no trading going on. Like, that's a five minute chart. There's your daily. Cobalt futures look to be down. Huge. Huge. I would say this probably has a lot to do with, like, a lot of companies are moving away. I mean, from electric vehicles. Not Tesla, obviously, but even Tesla sales are down. But I don't think, I don't think their um, deliveries are down. I don't know. 
It's been a while since I've looked at Tesla's anything, but. Yeah, listening to others' experiences can be incredibly enlightening and helpful. Yeah, they can be, for sure. Uh, just like I said, I mean, you'll know when you're ready. And it's not easy to do because, like I said, it's th my mom's side of the family were fishermen, right? That's how they made their living. They they were fishermen. They they fished. Sometimes they would catch fish and then they would bring it into the market and then they would sell the fish and then that would be their paychecks. And sometimes they couldn't catch fish. You know what I mean? That's the way you got to look at trading. There's not always a trade to take. There's always, I mean, there's always a trade to take, but you know, you got to be able to manage your risk. And say you've already lost two on the day and you don't want to lose any more. So, okay, you went out, you fished, you paid your expenses, the, the gas for the boat, the, the whatever, the bait, and you just come up short. Well, you go home, right? You go home without a paycheck. Trading is very similar to fishing. So... The question you got to ask yourself is, can you live like that? Can you live at like a fisherman? And I'm not talking about the fisherman that you see on the history channel that always catch fish because they edit out the videos where they don't catch fish. <laughs> they don't even put those on because how fun would that movie or that show be of them not Pulling in massive crab pots full of crab fish or crabs. I mean, those guys make huge money, but they also have the most dangerous job in the world. You couldn't pay me enough to do that. They, at least with trading, I don't get seasick. <laughs> I don't get seasick anyways. I live in Florida, <laughs> but... Anyway, that's beside the point. I've done my share of offshore fishing. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Make sure if if you know if, if permitting, I will go live again Thursday. If not, I will get a video out for sure. Uh, thank you all so much for being here. Make sure you guys trade safe, trade smart, and as always, happy trading, everybody.